Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work for IBM Advanced Technology Support in Europe. This video is about Enmon Advanced Topic. It's part one. There'll be more parts to follow. It was originally developed for an IBM Technical University conference in Prague 2019, but I suddenly worked out, well, not everybody on the planet could get there, so I thought I'd make it into a series of YouTube videos. Now, if you're a newbie to Enmon, then please pause this video now and go and find this YouTube channel, Nigel A.R. Griffiths, that's me, and find Enmon for Linux or Enmon for AX, depending which is your bag. Uh, you may actually be doing both. That's because in four or five charts time, you won't have any idea what I'm talking about unless you've seen these videos and probably given it a little bit of hands-on so you actually understand what's going on. Up to about three years ago these are the two views you had of Enmon either on the left hand side looking at it live in a console or a terminal and we could investigate what's actually happening perhaps look for a particular problem that your users are complaining about. Very low impact on the machine too. The other way is you collect all the data into an Enmon file just comma separated values and then you use the Microsoft Excel and one analyze the look at it and generate all the graphs automatically and actually look at the data. Now there are some things that have happened in the past two years, we'll cover some of those uh, in this presentation. Now I could talk about Enmon history for a couple of hours and maybe even a couple of days, but very quickly uh, Enmon became part of AIX in 2008 as part of the AIX source code owned by IBM as it hadn't been released to open source ever. It's 100% supported by IBM. A lot of people raise PMRs perhaps if they think they have a performance problem by looking at the N1 data. Support can look at that data, but they probably want you to use problem diagnostic software like the Perf, PMR, and Snap. So don't be surprised if they ask you for that after having a quick look at N1. On the Enmon for Linux side, well, that was released open source in 2009. So on sourceforge.net, you can download the uh, C code. It's only a couple of thousand lines long, so you can see exactly what's going on. It's a very different source code. I mean, the basic bones are the same, but um, the problem is that the performance data in AIX comes out of a nice library that we can call as a C programmer. In Linux, it's all over the disk in dozens of files and dozens of formats. So we have to sort of heuristically go around and try and find the data there. And most of the data is very similar the memory stats is very different in Linux that's just the way it is supported on lots of different hardware by me and lots of different distros and versions if you're using the analyzer then you're used to the idea of you run Enmon it outputs a file you eventually move that file perhaps at the end of the day to your workstation Windows or Apple you run Excel you run the Enmon analyzer spreadsheet click on a button to select your Enmon file and then it plods along creating some graphs for you there are some sort of fundamental issues of that process, largely a manual process, you could automate some of it. If you've got hundreds or thousands of LPARs or virtual machines, then you're into a very long time uh, dealing with lots of files. Uh, large files can take uh, a long time to actually process in Excel. Some people have you know, many tens of megabytes of data, and that can take, say, 20 minutes, and then it can even just crash your Windows operating system at that point, or it's paging so badly it just grinds to a halt and stops. And then you've got a great big uh, 40 megabyte uh, file that's difficult to share. You can't email it often. Um, and how do you get that to share it amongst a team? There's more sort of work you have to sort out. Now, there's a bit of a stop press in here. The Enmon Analyzer download has just been moved. It's now on the Enmon webpage in Source Forge. So be careful when next time you get the updates you'll have to go to SourceForge to get that down. So in 2016 or so I asked myself is there a better way and the answer is yes there is it's called Enmon chart. So again we take the Enmon files the .enmon files and that goes through a program called Enmon chart which is a corn shell script that generates a HTML file which is basically a website inside that it has some JavaScript and it has JavaScript arrays for the data. Somehow you get that to a browser on your laptop, various ways of doing that. And then when you invoke it on your browser, it pulls in the Google chart library and the browser actually generates the graphs. A whole load of benefits in here. You can see it's uh, 1,300 lines long. That's because there's so many graphs in there, there's only like 10 lines for every graph. This has uh, lots of good side effects. We can automate it. All the right hand side can be done on an AX or Linux server. There's no relying on Microsoft software, which the Linux guys quite appreciate. It's a corn shell script, so it's simpler to change and make modifications. We can, in our browser, have different tabs in the browser with different sets of graphs from different machines, so we can quickly compare and contrast the graphs. Far faster to generate, though, HTML. The files are a lot smaller, and so that makes them easier to share. And I think the graphs are even more beautiful. I'll show you some in a second. 
Where do you get this tool? Well, you'll find it on the Enmon for Linux website. Here's just a few quick samples. You can go and look at the Enmon chart video for some more. These are the buttons where we switch the actual uh, graphs we're looking at. This is a power machine going over entitlement and approaching the virtual processor number here. This is a three-dimensional CPU against I.O. against the size of the blob in here is the memory because the Oracle is the big gorilla in the room. But if you're a relational database virtual machine, that's exactly what you want to see. Down in here we can see this is a power 8 or 9 machine with SMT8 switched on with the threads being more heavily used. This is what I call an iceberg diagram. This is actually network stats, but it allows you to see what's going on. In this case, it's pretty much what comes in goes out. Um, if you've got an SQL engine, perhaps the SQL comes in very small, but the amount of data shipped back is a few megabytes. And you can also see sort of data take on perhaps at night with great big arriving data or a great big network backup at uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, that's the reminder of what's going on with Enmon, Enmon Eliza, and Enmon Chart. I actually use Enmon Chart nearly all the time now when I'm looking at the data. The rest of these series, part two, three, four, etc., are going to look through these various um, advanced topics and come back for part two to see the first few of those. Well, that's it for part one. Do come back for the following parts to the more detailed advanced features. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you like this. We need ammunition to warrant my time. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to be told when more videos appear.